Welcome to this episode of the Inflection Podcast. It's exciting to have Enoch Wang with me here today. Enoch is the co-founder and CEO of Rise Above Finance. They help individuals to realign their finances with their personal values and faith to bring about personal transformation. Let's get it. Thank you, Enoch, for hopping on board with us. No, I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for the invitation. Yes, sir. So I, I wanted to peel back the layers a little bit on, on your journey. Business is hard. Many businesses fold within the first year. You've been around a couple of years, been iterating, been growing, staying in the game. And I just want to rewind a little bit. What does it look like getting the business started and staying in the game till now? Yeah, for sure. So I'm, I'm going to take you way back and I'd be take you way back to my original plans for my life. Uh, my original goal was actually nothing to do with business. Actually, I wanted to be a musician. No way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So back in the day, I used to be a jazz musician. I would do gigs. I would do all that stuff. And eventually my Asian parents put me through business school. And so <laughs> then I was touring. I love music, but then now I'm starting to really appreciate business. And at that time I was going through the motions I got my corporate finance degree. I hopped from finance to nonprofit to tech. And I was in this kind of zone trying to figure out myself. I think for me, it's, I never really saw myself as a business owner, but I always wanted to be with people, whether it was entertaining them or being part of new technologies. I think for me, I always had a sense that I want to be part of something bigger. And for me, my whole journey starts about six, seven years ago, where I think I was at the time pretty high up or trying to get high up in tech, looking at management positions nationwide. And it was at that point where myself as a Christian, in my deep reflections, I was really struggling with, what's my purpose on earth? What's my career I want to do? And I remember God just one day saying, hey, you know, I have something for you. And I said, cool, God, what do you have for me? And he says, nothing much. I just want you to leave your job and everything behind. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay, man. okay. <laughs> right? I was like, okay, so what's after that? And it was just radio silence, man. And that was like, like one of those pivotal moments in your life where you're like, what's going on? How long did that period last for? It was about six months. So for six whole months. six whole months. Yeah. Silence. Silence. Wow. Just sitting on my butt. I was, I think it was one of the hardest parts because like you, man, we're hustlers. We want to grind it out. We are always on to the next best thing. But then at <laughs> yep. that point, I'm like, okay, God, first month with those K. First month, I'm like, yo, I'm extra holy. Second month, okay, a little bit of concern. By month six, I was just devastated. I'm like, everyone's doing cool things, getting married, moving on in their life. And I'm here watching my bank account drip down. Like, God, speak. And I think it was at that very moment that I remember waking up and talking to God. And I said, hey, God, like, I'm just fed up with you, with myself. I don't know who I am anymore. And the moment I said that, that's when God spoke to me. And he said, what did you say? You said you don't know who you are anymore. You don't know who you are anymore because you place your entire identity on your wealth, your achievements, your titles. For the first time, you've set these things aside to chase after me. Now we can really start your journey. And that was the turning point. And everything wow. just changed right after. That's amazing. So from that point, you, you hadn't incorporated a business yet. No. Not, not registered. No, not yet. That, okay. So what did that look like getting started? So you're based out of Canada, your business yes. is based out of Canada and you, you started that. What, what did it look like getting to your first paying customer? <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah. So about seven years ago, I went back into the financial world. I was building up my clientele with different firms. That was also where I met one of my business mentors who later became my business partner, Ivan. And so wow. he's, you know, 20 years in the, in the industry and really looking to see how are we building our business. But then the biggest thing I think that changed for me was we're sharing about why we were here. And I was still unsure of why I was in business. But Ivan was sharing about how he wanted to reconcile his Christian faith in his work. And specifically, he felt that his calling was to teach what the Bible said about money. And when I heard that, I was like, okay, that's really cool because that's my prayer. But my second thought was, yo, this guy's probably like a scammer. He's probably just trying to scam the Christians. Like I've seen them all before. You find a group of people, you go to the church and you just sell. And I'm like, I want nothing to do with it. Yeah, man. So 
for a whole year, I really tested them out. I went, we really studied the Bible together. We met a lot of different business people that were also Christian to really figure out, for me, I really wanted to figure out, hey, is there something more to this? And that's when I discovered that your work is a calling. Your workplace is a missions field. And the idea of actually just knowing that the Bible has so much content about about financial wisdom, about management skills, and so many best practices today can be derived from biblical text. And that was when I was, my eyes were open. I'm like, yo, how come I never knew about this? Yeah. Like, I have a finance degree. I grew up in church the whole time, but I was never taught this. And that kind of what sparked the sense where it's like, hey, if no one's doing it, we should do it. And that's really when we started to just find that, that missing hole in the market. And we just got in, incorporated, and started to build. That's amazing. And, and now you're having people reaching out to you from all around the world, right? For your services. And yes, sir. You're at the precipice thinking, okay, what does it look like to scale beyond Canada? Is that scary? Oh, man, it terrifies me. <laughs> Honestly, my man. I think when we first started, we just wanted to be known as the go-to Christian finance guys in Vancouver. And then it became, we're province-wide. Then it became national. About a year and a half ago, we soft launched in Toronto. We now have a lot of clientele and some partners over there. We've had clients in Alberta. And quickly it became, actually, no, God, you guys are going to go nationwide. And then last year, God was giving us a vision about the global picture. And I'm thinking, man, I'm just trying to survive right now. I don't even know yeah. what being global is, let alone going to Canada. But then I think what's been really awesome is that so many people have been reaching out from across different countries really hungry for more knowledge. They want to know what we're teaching. They want to join our courses. They want our services. And we're at this point where I'm like, hey, how do we build it up? How do we grow and scale? Because yeah. we weren't really focused on that at all. We just wanted to stay small. But as we're waiting for God to move, I think this idea of scaling is now coming back. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> that's Thanks, really man. amazing. I, are there certain leadership anecdotes that have stuck with you over the years? And that maybe you still even implement now with your own company. Oh, there's so many. I think one of the biggest things that have really helped me on my journey is to ask the question of who's the owner or who is the CEO. So on paper, I'm the CEO. But in reality, God is the CEO of the business. So it's not my business, it's God's business. My life is not my own, it's God's. It, it belongs to God. And so when you look at it, then the picture becomes different. Then instead of being a very self-serving, inward, intrinsic thing, it becomes actually, what does it look like for me to surrender to God and walk alongside him? And so one of the things that really helps me is that I tell people I'm very data-driven. I like to be rational and logical, but I'm also spirit-led. So people are like, what? I'm like, yeah, it's like train tracks, parallel train tracks, right? On one hand, I have all the data, I have all the evidence I need to make the right decisions, the staff, the people. I work together. But at the same time, God's there. God's the one that gives me direction. He's the one I turn to and I surrender to him. And he's the one through the spirit that guides me. And when I have both working in unison, oh man, it's perfect. But when one thing falls off, then that's when everything derails. And so that's yeah. really helped me both with my leadership and our team in terms of direction and planning. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that. That, that sounds very purpose-driven. It does sound like a conundrum. When you say <laughs> spirit led and also data driven, but I like how you use the analogy of parallel train tracks. And that was the next thing I was going to ask you, like how you stay grounded as your company grows, as your company scales, as you have the rigors, the push, the pull of working with customers, working on coaching your team. It's so easy to become, for lack of a better term, to lose your soul doing that, just right. put in so many different directions, you're just on the grind, right? So I was going to ask you how you stay grounded and stay sane, really, it's yeah. hard. <laughs> yeah, oh man, that's such a good question. And honestly, I'm still trying to figure that out. I think there's many days where I wake up and I think, oh man, like God, I need your help so much. And I think that's that point where it's like, how do you operate in the midst of chaos when you know that you don't have all your stuff together? I think for me, that's really the faith element where I have my spiritual disciplines, I have good a balance, whether it's with my relationships, my health, uh, my fitness routine. So there's things that keeps me grounded. You know, I can speak so much about optimization. And just, but at the end of the day, I think it's who or where I can place my trust faith in. Yeah. And there's where I lose motivation or I lose my drive. 
and I have discipline, there's days where discipline fails, then it's like, where can I turn to? And I think for me, something that's really helped our company is that every Monday, the very first thing we all do is we come together for prayer or a Bible study. And then we just talk like what's going to go on for the week. We really just share with each other what's going on in our hearts. And what started as a simple practice has become something I look forward to. It's something where we've actually seen people open up and it's a place where it's not just work. It's not just transaction, but we really care for each other. We really yeah. are caring for their families, for their well-being. And I just love that, that place where we're able to just surrender to God and then leave feeling uplifted. So that's something that I really look forward to. That's amazing. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Are, are there certain things you're excited about in the finance world coming down the pipeline and specifically for Rise Above Finance? Oh man, dude, there's so much. <laughs> I think, oh man. I left we... that open ended Sorry. on purpose. <laughs> I love it, man, dude. You, you got the questions, man. Oh man, oh, let me think. I think something that we've always been passionate about is education and on yeah. teaching. And something that I think has been something really cool we've been able to work on over the years is a holistic integration of coaching, counseling, pastoralship, and consulting all mixed in one. Where I think the traditional models has been very, you know, you come to me, I'll tell you what to do, you leave, or a very transactional thing, or something that's very based on um, a defined set of rules. But then when you look at it, number one question I get, it's, you know, where should I invest in? How do I make the most money, et cetera? But then my question back is always, why? <laughs> why do you want to make as much money? I can make a million dollars now, but what's next? Two million, four million? Do you even know why you want this? And it's not the money they're thinking about. It's what they can buy with the money, their lifestyle, who they're buying it for. And what I really love is that it's hard to talk about life because people are, whether they don't know how or they're afraid to go deep, but money is a topic that, draws people in but then i use money or as a doorway into their life into their soul yeah. and money is very telling I, I look at it as what is the story that the numbers are telling me about you and what is the story you're telling me about yourself is there a discrepancy and there's usually something that's misaligned and that's really where we start to open up doors into conversations about but you talked about love in your family but that's not really reflected here so where's the gap Let's talk about that. Are you fighting with your spouse over money? Do your kids not have a good view of money? What's going on? And it wow. really opens up going deep. Doors. If we're going deep, man. Yes, sir. <laughs> wow. So that's very interesting. Very holistic. That's part counselor, part financial coach, financial yes. advisor. <laughs> it's all in one, man. Multiple hats. Wow. That is cool. So that's something you guys are implementing already or you're yes, looking to roll that up. Okay. Yes, we've already implemented it. We have um, a membership and a subscription format already launched last year, which has been quite revolutionary. It's been amazing. But what we're working on now is we've already created some courses. We've done workshops. We're trying to partner with some different academic institutions as well as some other organizations, nonprofit and for profit to deliver some of our content. And so this is where we're praying and thinking about all right, what's next on the global side? Do we launch in Malaysia and Taiwan and the States and the UK and talking to some of our partners across the globe on to what does it look like to have an online platform? What does it look like to deliver programs and service uh, worldwide? And so that's the next step. Let's go. Yo, cool. thanks, man. It, yeah. Oh, man. It's been so amazing to watch your journey over the past couple of years from getting started to iterating and making pivots and continuing to scale. I'm really excited to watch the owl continue to grow. Thanks, man. My gosh. For individuals looking to start their own businesses, mm -hmm. what is one piece of advice that maybe you've heard or you've applied for yourself that has been very invaluable to staying in the game? Yeah. Oh man, there's so much in that. But I think as someone who started and failed businesses and has found, finally found something that stuck, I think for me, what's really important is really defining why you're doing what you're doing without getting into popular anecdotes, Simon Sinek's or the fly or all the other stuff, right? There's so many things I can say that that's, you can just Google up. But I think something that's really helped me is when the times get tough, it's what's your support network? Who can you turn to? Whether it's your mentors, your church group, your spouse, whoever it is. And then I think the second thing is that's really reflective in iterative design. It's how do you really find that product market fit? How do you find your go-to-market strategy? And then so I say, 
to people, it's you really have to start with the basics, right? Whether it's the Lean Startup or all these different resources, it's you really have to hone in on what problem you're solving, what service are you delivering? Does the world need it? Does it want it? And are they willing to pay for it? And I think a lot of Christians, they use kind of their faith as an excuse for shoddy work or just to say, let's do a partnership. And I say, no, actually, because you're a Christian, you have actually even more things to prove. You have to prove people that you can actually not only do your work, but the world is watching. Those that aren't of the same faith, they're going to be judging you and they're going to be saying, can you do your work? And for example, for our company, the majority of our clients aren't Christian and they keep coming back to us and they come and I'm like, guys, we're really Christian. <laughs> Why do you want to work with us? And they're like, I don't really care about your faith, but we care about who you are, what you do. You've helped so many of our, our friends and family and we trust you guys. And that's, that's amazing. become the open doorway for us to share our faith with them, to share just life. So it's that relationship aspect at another day. That's what we clean on to. Yeah, that is really cool. Thank you so much. I'm going to do a rapid fire thing, say a few words, and I'm curious to see the first things that come to mind. (laughs) No pressure. I've been playing around with this format on a few episodes. So business. Oh, first thing comes to mind. It's tough. (laughs) Ah, Tough. Love it. Finance. Oh, an amazing tool of use, right? AI. Oh, man, you got to use it. Got to have it. Got to use it. I love it. Thank you so much, Anna. It was a pleasure to have you on with us today. I'll add your links to the show notes for ways folks can engage with you for your courses, your LinkedIn, and all the relevant details for y'all. Amazing. Hey, thanks for having me on your show, man.